about game week. Poor Let's guy. take a look. Michelle Obabe, what she had to say. Racism, fear, division. These are powerful weapons and they can destroy this nation if we don't deal with them head on. So I wanna ask every single American, no matter what party you normally vote for, to please take whores a moment to pause. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores Click in this off the news. Of political Think about how you felt. What if they were like, yeah, which is why I'm voting for Trump. Thank you, Michelle Obama. I was gonna pull back and not vote in this election cycle because I thought Donald Trump is, you know, kind of meanie. He's a big meanie Bobini and he got COVID and that's kind of a pussy thing, you know? Is uh, it's not exactly projecting strength to me because I think COVID is hoax. And then uh, a president that got China virus injected in his veins is not my president, so I wasn't going to vote. But then I saw Michelle Obabe tell me to go out and vote, so I'm not going to be casting a protest vote to Joe Jorgensen. And instead, we'll be voting for Donald Trump. Over these last four years, how quickly things have turned. And then think about what the next his four years could mean Hashan. for our country's future. The message we will send to our children about who we are and what we... This is literally the worst messaging possible. His name I'm sorry, is this did not fucking work with Hillary Clinton in 2016. And this messaging is idiotic. You know what's not? You know what's successful? Donald Trump literally being on death's doorstep. Uh, and... and having access to all the preventative measures on the planet and not following it. That's actually good for Joe Biden, okay? But as far as messaging goes, like trying to be like, oh my God, you have to, you have to vote for Joe Biden because like, what will we tell our children? It only works for you because you're already voting for Joe Biden. So the people who think like, oh yeah, this is actually a great idea. Like I'm going to fucking vote. Like bitch, you were already voting for Joe Biden. That's why. That's why you think this message works. Truly value. Think about what would possibly compel you to accept this level of chaos, violence, and confusion. So you're voting Trump? Under Fuck this no. president. And be willing. What are you fucking insane? Of course I'm not voting for Trump. I'm being fucking sarcastic. When I do, listen, brother, whenever I do this voice, know that I'm, I'm mean the opposite of what I'm saying. Okay. This is my fucking chud voice. Are you out of your fucking mind, dude? to watch our country continue to spiral out of control you said yourself non-voters are the biggest voting block dude not enough people vote no yeah and this is she's not talking to non-voters talking about fucking don't cast the protest vote and also non-voters don't vote not because they think like you know donald trump is good or donald trump is bad or joe biden is good or joe biden is bad like there are a multitude of different reasons as to why they don't fucking vote and telling them like, oh, you really got to vote because it's a really serious one this time around is not going to fucking work. Because we can no longer pretend that we don't know exactly who and what this president stands for. Search your hearts His name and is your conscience. Hassan. And then vote for Joe Biden like your lives depend on it. Look, you all know that politics has never been my thing. But to all the young people out there, to all this the black and brown folks, to anyone who feels frustrated and alienated by this whole system, I get it. I, I really do. In the but in the face of all of the frustration and alienation I've experienced throughout my life, never once have I considered not voting as a viable option. Not once have I thought about foregoing a right and privilege that so many before me fought and died for. Not once. Bro, none of this works. I'm sorry. Absolutely none of this fucking works. Like, this is not going to change a non-voter's mind. You have to make an argument as to why they should vote for someone. Because voting, whether you like to admit it or not, is very difficult in this fucking country. And it's made, even if it's easy to vote, it's still confusing. It's a confusing process. We don't have any measures in order that, that would make it so that it's easier to fucking vote. And then also on the other side, the electoral college makes it seem like your vote doesn't matter. And in some circumstances, it kind of doesn't. But uh, it's, it's basically like if a, lot if a lot more people felt the way that you did, then it would truly, uh, truly be a problem. But only then. 
So like you have to make an argument as to why you you have to make an argument as to why you should go and vote for one party over the other. And so many of these people in positions of power for some fucking weird reason refuse to do this. I don't know why the argument over the and over again is like, dude, come on, the stakes are so high. It's like, yeah, the people who are voting already know that and that's why they're fucking voting, whether they hate Joe Biden or not, okay? Like, you need to tell people why they should vote. I hope she will get to that. Have I let someone else's ignorance and hatred keep me from doing my duty as a citizen? Because I know we don't have the luxury to assume that things are going to turn out okay. We cannot afford to withhold our votes or waste them on a protest candidate. One of these two men will be president. And only if we vote for Joe Biden with power and with passion will our voices even have a chance at being heard. Because folks who are perfect... I'm not, I'm not going to lie. What do I always say? The moment you say, the moment you say, oh my God, you're not voting, you're voting, you're doing a protest vote. If you're on the Biden camp, the moment that you engage in voter shaming is a moment that you've lost, is a moment that you could have been fucking smiling and dialing for Joe Biden, okay? Bad strategy. I'm sorry. It's dumb as fuck. If you really want Joe Biden to win, instead of being like, oh, don't cast the protest vote, please, it's so important, then go and try to tackle the people that are not voting. And the way to do that is not by fucking shaming them. So dumb. Telling non-voters like, oh, you don't understand how devastating this is, will only push them to further solidify in their position of like, yeah, fuck you, I don't give a fuck. It's not my fault. Nothing I do can change the fucking planet, change the course of American history. Trying to say that it's actually a patriotic duty to go out and vote, again, at a time when it's as difficult as possible, is also silly. Oh, it's your patriotic duty to vote. Really? It's my patriotic duty to vote for one geriatric over the other? That's only going to marginally improve things? Like, get the fuck this out of here. Range, mm, pervert. You just lost the radical left. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just dumb as fuck. This is a you can't shame people into doing stuff that they don't want to do. Okay? You have to tell them why you must vote for Joe Biden. And for some weird fucking reason, these people never do that. I don't get it. Stop saying marginally, please. Well, I'm sorry. What do you want? Like, on issues of, like, COVID response... Certainly, Joe Biden's administration would be more capable of dealing with it. And marginal differences in administrations lead to gigantically different outcomes on the ground. But like, what, you think fucking Joe Biden is going to turn the course of history? All of a sudden, the American imperial machine is going to fucking scale it back? If it was Bernie Sanders, it would still be a very difficult endeavor. I would still be incredibly skeptical of Bernie Sanders being able to follow through with all the promises that he had made. But as far as like Joe Biden goes... He never ran on that message even, so why the fuck would he do that? He ran on, everything is going to be normal. Nothing will fundamentally change. We'll go back to normalcy. And normalcy is Obabe. So, I'm sorry, but uh, you're, you're, this notion that like Joe Biden is going to be the savior of America is idiotic too. Just fucking tell him what Joe Biden is going to do. Talk about the importance of, uh, of the public option. How many more people are going to have insurance. Talk about how, what Joe Biden is going to do against uh, like talk about the green new deal but the watered down version of the green new uh, deal that joe biden is working on talk about the shit that joe biden talks about on campaign stops talk about increasing the 50 uh, minimum wage of 15 dollars an hour but they don't want to do that because they think that all all matter of policy is an opening is a weakness is an opening for the republicans to just grab onto and pounce down and say it's socialism Republicans don't do that. They literally talk about policy all day. They talk about policy whenever they're even saying build the wall. Build the wall is a perfect encapsulation of national security and also the economy. The wall is racist, certainly, okay? And a lot of people in my chat now are going to say, oh, what do you mean? It's just a piece of wall. How is that racist, Liptard? Shut the fuck up. Like, 
but the wall is a perfect way to describe American racial anxieties from the dominating class, worried that like brown people are coming in and changing our, our culture, our sovereignty, okay? It's national security because terrorists are coming over and rapists are coming over the wall and we're gonna fucking build that wall that we're gonna stop the rapists from coming in. It's a perfect encapsulation of, of uh, uh, immigration and how immigration, in their minds at least, uh, impact oh, the economy. Like, you shot. truly do not understand how Republicans operate if you cannot grasp that. Every time these motherfuckers say, build the wall, they're not just saying, like, let's build a wall because I'm racist. I mean, they are saying that. Whores in this house. But there There's is some whores in this so house. much There's associated with that. There, are, there is a future promise associated with that. A promise that their futures are going to look better when, uh, when an immigrant-free America will actually this be better. Now, those are all lies. Work. Those are built on lies. But Republicans do an incredibly good job of, like, feeding you the underlying precursory red herrings like immigrants are a threat to national security. This and then they turn around and they do a good job of, like, advocating and tailoring uh, their promises around that message. We don't do that for some fucking weird reason. Oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. Okay? Like, that's so silly. Democrats should do that. I love the system. I can now remove the tinfoil hat. Big fan man, have you seen the video of a Confederate flag debate in a high school class? I thought it was interesting. No, I, I haven't, but I'm not interested. It. Essentially, Republicans actually stick to a message. Yeah. Oh, you're such and that a message is bullshit. Man, like, son. that message is bullshit. That message is a lie. It's built around a lie. But there's still... A lot of people forget what you said about Republicans five months ago. Oh, what do you mean? A big man, Hassan. Guys, it's just like in the boys' TV show. It's because Republicans are so unashamed of manipulating people, whereas Dems are scared of doing the same, play the game. Not necessarily. I don't think Democrats are... This is a I don't think Democrats are fucking perfect. nice, and that's why they're afraid to play the game. I think they can be losers and still win in the long run.